Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel and another video. Today, we are breaking down the Hall of Fame and who got in, who got out. We're talking about Roland. We're talking about McGriff. And I am here with my friend, Justin, who is all over social media. If you just type in jarthqb11 on TikTok and Instagram, you'll find him. Justin Arthqb on Twitter, you'll find him. You just type his name into Google and it'll lead you in the right spot, especially to his merch store, which he just dropped merch for. Why don't you talk about that for a minute, Justin? It's been a long time coming for the merch. Uh, I've been working really hard, found a nice little group of people to work with to get the merch out, and finally got some Arth Vader merch for you. So uh, Disney, don't copyright me, because uh, I did not use anything Star Wars other than a font. So, but no, go get your shirts. Uh, I mean, I'll be, I even do pitcher training, uh, remote and in person. So uh, since we're talking about baseball here, go get you some uh, Tom House, who deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, training today. So, but no, go check out the website, a11performance.com. Follow me on all socials for uh, the stuff for my football journey, but also coaching and just lifestyle tips. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I'm happy, but maybe I'm not as happy. Who knows? Watch the video. <laughs> So, Hall of Fame voting just ended. It was announced yesterday as we're recording this. Is that true? I think it yeah, is. Yeah, it was announced yesterday. Uh, today is Thursday the 26th, and whenever you watch this, it will probably not be Thursday the 26th, just based on editing times and that it's like 10 p.m. Justin's time. All right, so yeah, the guy that was voted in originally or I guess voted in by the writers, was Scott Rowland. He's the one that made it in, I guess we'll say naturally. I feel like he's deserving because he's one of the better third basemen definitely when we were growing up, especially yep. defensively. Uh, I feel like this is the right decision to have him in. I know third base is pretty weak. Not weak. It's pretty small in the Hall of Fame. Uh, but I definitely feel like he's deserving. What do you think? No, I completely agree. And in doing a little bit of research for the video, I, I found this out too about Scott Rowland. Him and my legend, Chipper Jones, are the only natural third baseman to play third base pretty much the entirety of their major league career um, in the Hall of Fame. Uh, so obviously, I know Chipper Jones started off as a shortstop, but he was quickly converted in the minors to third base. And so uh, Scott Rowland and Chipper are the only two natural third basemen to play third base the entirety of their career in the Hall of Fame. And I think that's, one, pretty weird to say, but two, I think it just shows the not necessarily weakness of the third base class or the third basemen that are in the Hall of Fame, but it's just one of those weird natural um, stats that you want to you wanna throw that you feel like wouldn't be true, but it is true. Yeah. But no, Scott Rowland's definitely deserving of it. I think to do it, I mean, he played 17 years and to do it at that level for that long is impressive at any position, but especially at third base where def defense is such a critical part of third base. Uh, I, to be able to do that at such a high level, both defensively and offensively for 17 years is impressive. You know, if you take his like top 10 years where he's winning gold gloves and he's in the MVP voting, you know, he won a rookie of the year. Certainly a guy I feel like that's Hall of Fame worthy. And yep. I, it, I feel like it would have been a pretty big snub for him not to get in. No, I completely agree. I mean, uh, as you kind of talked about with the, the athleticism of needing to play third base, especially even later on to his career. I mean, yeah, he was only, quote unquote, 37 in this day and age that Tom Brady can play football at 46 and uh, other athletes can play well into their 40s. But um, you, you look at this and it kind of reminds me a little bit of like Cal Ripken, like obviously the demands of athleticism to play shortstop is completely different than the athletic demands to play third base. And I do feel like at third base, you can get away with some of that. And that is speaking from a third baseman here. So uh, I guess there's a little <laughs> yeah. bias there. But um, but no, um, you you look at that. And, but he was still an all star in 2010 and 2011, uh, his age 35 and 36 seasons, the seat and the season before he retired. Uh, so I, I still think the the longevity of his career, whether it was his, his amazing time in Philadelphia that I'm glad I don't remember. Um <laughs> 
but the times in St. Louis or even to end off the career in Cincinnati, like he's, he's consistently been consistent uh, his entire career. Uh, I mean, he, there was a couple seasons where he only played 55, 56 games, but for the most part, he's played more than 112 every season. Um, and for someone who I know has battled some injuries in his career, not not a bad look to play 112 plus every, almost every year of your MLB career, and then having the what is it like seven or eight All Star appearances, the couple Gold Gloves that he's had. Um, I mean, cr- great career, and he deserves the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I think the one that sticks out to me the most in his accolades is winning a Gold Glove at 35. Yeah, because uh, that's just impressive to win a gold glove at third base at any point in your career is impressive. Uh, obviously, we've been spoiled with Arenado, who wins one every year. So we kind of lose sight on how impressive it actually is. But to win one at that age, again, at that position, to me, that might be the most impressive thing that he did for his entire career. For him, I think consistency and starting to turn things on again in the later half of his career is what helped him push push him to get into the Hall of Fame. You know, he ended with 300 home runs, 2,000 hits. Those alone probably don't get him in, but the defensive ability and the longevity, I think, definitely did. So, yeah. you know, good on Scott Rowland for, uh, for making it in. Definitely deserved. The other guy that got in is an Atlanta Brave legend. So I'll let you kind of talk about that one first. Yeah, the, uh, the Mad Dog. Uh, Fred McGriff. Uh, I mean, I can't tell you how many times when I was growing up in school. Now, granted, when I was in elementary school, he was already in Chicago um, and starting to dwindle out uh, in his career with the Dodgers. And then obviously the age 40 season, 2008. So a lot of that, like the end of his career was when I was in elementary school. Uh, But even then, the lasting impact just as a person that he made in Atlanta uh, with the work that he's done with the police force and all that other kind of stuff. I mean, I just remember going to these um, organized school events where uh, you would have the the mat, you'd have the Mad Dog mascot, uh, and he'd be wearing a Fred McGriff jersey. Uh, and so, one of the first ever Braves I ever really remember growing up was Fred McGriff because of that. Uh, but no, when we talk about the on the field person, though, I mean, uh, I mean, two two eighty four batting average. Uh, 493 home runs. Wish he could have hit the 500, but um, he definitely lost his power towards the end of his career. Other than that, um, 30 home run season randomly that popped it in <laughs> Chicago in 02. Yeah. Um, but but no, I mean, so close to 500 home runs, over 1500 RBIs. Uh, I mean, his OPS was 886, so decently solid there. Um, and I mean, he was. Solid fielder, I wouldn't say amazing fielder, but solid fielder. Uh, but the bat was always there for Fred, um, and uh, he was the first Fred in Braves country uh, that to later come with Freddie Freeman. But yeah, but no, I, I I'm glad he was in a, a Brave, and I'm glad that uh, it seems to me that he will go in as a Brave, even though it could be close with Toronto or uh, Chicago when because the times are just so similar. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think of him as a Brave, certainly. He did play the most games in Atlanta. To me, it doesn't mean as much probably as it means to you, because I'm not from Atlanta, so I did not grow up idolizing Fred McGriff or having him around. But I do look back, and he is a he is certainly a very good player. Uh, yeah, and the other thing I'll say, too, is, yes, I think the majority of his amazing moments in his career were his times in Atlanta. But uh, I think people down in Tampa will be loving him even more than even some Atlanta Braves fans will because of what he did to start off that franchise. He was the first original kind of franchise player for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Um, and so he was he was kind of the first guy that any Tampa Bay fan could root for. Um, so And then he still was an all-star with them in his uh, second to last season. Uh, with Tampa Bay. And I mean, he set the foundation to push the Rays to what they are now uh, as well. Um, but but no, I mean, I, I'm still happy that he's he's a Brave getting in. So my Braves bias is always showing, <laughs> showing you. Oh, there's no shortage of that ever. Uh, you know, three-time Silver Slugger winner, five-time All-Star, 
Uh, you know, he won an All-Star Game MVP, won a World Series. He checked off all the boxes you'd want to, except for maybe Gold Glove, but I'm sure he doesn't super care about that at this point. Uh, now he's a Hall of Famer. Worth noting, yeah. uh, for those of you that don't know, it was not voted in by writers. It was like a committee vote. He was the one that got in from that. Roland was the one who, I guess, naturally got in from writers. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, they're both Hall of Famers. So, counts all this. So, to kind of finish this out, let's talk about some of the guys that didn't get it. Uh, you know, we'll start off with the guy I kind of want to talk about the most, and that's Billy Wagner. One of the best left-handed relievers of all time. Uh, and for that reason, I feel like he should be in. Because there's really not, in recent memory, a lefty that has been as dominant as he was. And he did it at a high level for 16 years. I think longevity is important for Hall of Fame. I think Wagner kind of checks that box off. To me, he was dominant enough for long enough to get in. If I had a vote, I would have voted for him. But that could be a lefty bias, as I'm also left-handed. Although he's technically right-handed. You just learned how to throw left-handed. Because he broke his arm or something. So hear that and it'll be the show like 18 times a day. I think for me, it's the save number. It's 422 career saves. That's pretty good as a career closer. Would you like that to be 500? Sure. Uh, but he was on some teams that weren't exactly winning a whole lot yeah. at points in his career. You know, he had an 86% save percentage, uh, and that's nothing There's... to scoff at. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, especially over a 16-year uh, a career like he did. To me, as maybe the best, and if not the best, one of the best left-handed relievers of all time, he deserves to get in. But I do understand it's tougher for relievers to get in just because the stats don't accumulate. You don't look at a 3,000 strikeout guy out of a pen ever uh no. so i do understand it is harder to vote for relievers but i do feel like he's one of the few that maybe should be in i would like to go now to a guy i'm gonna let you talk about andrew jones another one maybe my second biggest position player snub behind helton why don't you talk about andrew jones first yeah, so with Andrew Jones, it's uh, – I understand why he's not in uh, or not in yet. But I will say if we want to talk about winners, losers, uh, I think the the number here – let me get it pulled back up. Uh, the number of voting percentage, 226 votes, 58.1% 58 of the vote. Um, and he still has, I think, four years remaining on the ballot. Um, I think that's a very promising sign for Andrew. Um, and I think Andrew will get in. Um, but the issue with Andrew is it's it, it, it's kind of the DeGrom syndrome. It, it, he was very, very good for a very, very short amount of time. And then once he was declining in Atlanta and left Atlanta to New York, what happened? Where did he go? Like he forgot how to play baseball, it felt. Um, mm -hmm. And um, – and 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 knowing John Rocker now, um, me personally, and I'll actually, funny enough, guys, I'll see him tomorrow at one of our pitching workouts. But, um, but no, like one thing John Rocker was talking about was Andrew Jones, in his opinion, was the greatest baseball player to ever play baseball, and he saw saw Bo Jackson play, and he saw all these amazing athletes play. But Andrew was the guy that stuck out. That was like, okay, like this dude is different than the rest. Um, but once he signed that big deal, the work ethic kind of stopped. Um, and he stopped going to fielding practice and he, cause he felt like he had made it he'd made the money. Um, and so with Andrew Jones, he definitely deserves to be in if I'm throwing Braves bias, but, but even outside of Braves bias, I think the domination that he had in the short amount of time that he played, uh, very well, it was, rattling he was rattling off stats and one of the most exciting players in baseball and and I think when you change the culture of baseball just a little bit by how you play I think that's still deserving enough to be in the Hall of Fame because not only did you accrue uh Hall of Fame numbers in five or six years of his career um consistently 
and then tail off towards the end. But you also changed baseball and made baseball exciting. So um, I think that's worthy enough of a Hall of Fame uh, inductee. And I do think it's promising that he was at 58.1% of the vote with four years left remaining. Um, And yeah, you have to kind of look at who gets added to the ballot, who might be first ballot Hall of Famers in the next year or two, three years, whatever. Um, But I do think uh, the I I, I have a feeling that Wagner and um, Andrew Jones might be the next two guys in next year. Yeah, it'll be real interesting to me on Andrew Jones to kind of wrap up on Jones is you know he didn't have the counting stats that you would want he didn't get to 2000 hits for his career uh he was about 70 short of that he didn't have you know 500 home runs he didn't even have 450 home runs and all of those are things you can kind of look at he had a 111 OPS for his career 111 OPS plus for his career so he's 11% above average which isn't great. That's not necessarily Hall of Fame numbers for a 17-year career, but you have to think about the last five or six years of his career were just simply not good offensively or defensively. I think that's what's keeping him out. But I would put him in for one reason. Well, for many reasons, but one of the reasons is the 10 gold gloves in a row. Yes. To me, like that alone should put him in. I think the 10 year gap of him being the best defensive center fielder in the game without a break, it wasn't like he won five and then won five more later. Like he won 10 in a row. And again, we talked about with Roland, a pretty premium position in center field where there's a lot of great center fielders that were happening. And now, and they were happening at that time, and they were happening before him. So for him to be set apart in the National League as the best center fielder defensively with Gold Glove Awards, to me, that alone should stick him in. But I clearly, I don't have a vote. If I had a vote, I'd probably vote for him, I think. I do understand the case for him to not be in, and I understand the case for him to be in. Will he ever get in? I think, hopefully. Uh... But it's going to be close. It's going to be tight. I don't know that it's a sure shot. Uh, The last guy I want to kind of solo out is Todd Helton, who just missed by maybe 10 or so votes. I think it's real simple on him. I think he gets a bad rap uh, for playing at Coors. I feel like he was very good in Coors, clearly, but also very good outside of Coors. I think people just get kind of wrapped up in the Coors effect like they kind of did for Larry Walker. Uh, But he certainly has the numbers to get in the Hall of Fame. Talking about 2,500 hits, you know, 369 career home runs, a 316 batting average, 61 war. Those, to me, are Hall of Fame numbers. I do understand that's maybe a little bit inflated because he played his entire career in Coors. But I don't know. What do you think? I'm in complete agreement with you. I, I, unfortunately, there is always going to be a course tax, I guess you can call it that, um, just because it's in the Mile High City and the ball flies there. Um, but but no, I mean, the dude played for uh, 17 years and was very consistent uh, with a extremely high batting average almost every year um, and hit an average of 27 home runs in 162 games. Uh, yeah, uh, you maybe get an extra three or four per season uh, because of the cores effect. But in, in the grand scheme of things, like you're still going to hit those out in Arizona. Um, and so I, I don't I don't get it. So I, it's, I think Todd Helton is, is a definite Hall of Famer. Um, I mean, obviously, if you look at the numbers, and now I don't know off the top of my head who enters the ballot next year, um, but yeah. I, I, Todd Helton definitely is, is someone who, de- who definitely deserves the Hall of Fame. So, yeah, well, Andrew Jones probably struggled to get in the Hall of Fame uh, because of a guy like Todd Helton, Paul, possibly. Um, and then you got to see who comes in next year too. But I think Todd Helton's probably the uh, – the name brand guy or the main guy that gets in next year, especially based on the voting results here. Yeah. Uh, I think he's got five more years on the ballot. Feels like he'll get in before those five years with how close he is, uh, especially with Larry Walker now. And 
Uh, kind of the same thing that kept Larry Walker out for so long is that Coors effect. So, yep. all right, let's do this to close. Uh, those are the main guys I feel like we needed to talk about. If you had a vote, you know, you get 10 players. You don't have to use all of them. Who would you, who'd you vote for? Uh, uh, well, um, obviously Andrew Jones is my first vote. Uh, first one I want to vote. Uh, but I mean, Scott Rowland would have been a vote for mine as well. So make that too. Todd Helton, uh, Billy Wagner probably would have been there too. Um, Jimmy Rollins, I think just personally seeing him face Atlanta all the time, I think Jimmy Rollins would have been a guy that I would have voted for. Um, I mean, I have an affinity to Mark Burley, but I probably wouldn't have voted him in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I will say uh, Torrey Hunter uh, would probably be a guy that I would vote. And I know it's very the, the results here look very, very bleak now um, for him to probably ever be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And uh, just to round it off, uh, guys that are now off the ballot uh, because they got less than 5% of the vote that I would have probably voted for um, is R.A. Dickey. You got to have a knuckleballer in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> um, Jacoby Ellsbury, just because I liked how he played outfield with the Yankees. Uh, and I'll just for Jake's sake, I'll throw in Jason Worth because uh, okay. I hated facing him when he was in Washington. Uh, but no, I mean, there, there's a lot of deserving guys on here. Um, a rod, I still don't think gets my vote. Uh, although in the grand scheme of things, he probably does deserve to be in based on the numbers, even if they were PED inflated. Um, but the real question is, is, is he ever going to get in with the PEDs? I don't know. To me, it's tough. If bonds didn't get in, it feels like it's going to be tough for anybody in that kind of area. Yeah. To to kind of break into. I'll give you I'll give you mine. I don't know that I'd fill out my entire ten. Uh I think Roland, Helton, Wagner, and Jones, I would all vote for. The top four guys, vote getters. I feel like those guys all of them I would feel good about making it into the Hall of Fame. Uh I it was his last year, but I probably would have voted for Jeff Kent. Uh full well knowing he's not going to make it into the Hall of Fame. Just feel like his career kind of doing it in front of Bonds, being Bonds' second guy on the field, not necessarily off the field, would uh, would get my vote. I think I would vote for A-Rod just because of how long he played and he ended at 699 home runs. You don't see that very often, even with steroids. So I think I would vote for A-Rod, but I'd be on the fence about it if I was to really think about it. Yeah. I would vote for Francisco Rodriguez as one of the most dominant closers for that year. He had like 62 saves or whatever it was in that year. And then on the guys that didn't get in, I'd probably vote for Mike Napoli, knowing that's not going to make a huge difference. Uh, right. as a Rangers legend, I'd probably vote for R.A. Dickey for the same reasons you would probably vote for R.A. Dickey. Uh, and those are probably it. That's probably it. That probably puts me at about 10. Tory Hunter, I'd vote in. Yeah. But, yeah, so that's going to do it for the video. Like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed, and we'll catch you in the next one.